Hello, this is Kerry Schutz with MathWorks, and I'm back with part two of our frames in Simulink and how they can be a tricky a video series. So in this session, we are going to concentrate on um, the computational aspects of frames. In the, the first session, we concentrated mostly on the visualization. So I've got, I'm going to pick up where I left off in the, with the same model. Uh, the blocks that I was using before were this uh, pair of sine wave and scopes up here. I've commented those out. And now I've just copied those down. I've added an adder and a delay block. So the world's simplest uh, digital system or, or close to it. It's an accumulator or, or um, <clears throat> discrete time integrator. And it's in sample based mode right now. So if I were to run this, you see it's sample based. So um, I'll turn off the sample time colors. We don't need that right now. So you don't see any like four by one or you know some frame size parameter. I'm gonna go ahead and call up my scope and we'll see what we got. So what we see is if we were to look at the input and we can just overlay those against each other, uh, input versus output. <clears throat> what we're gonna see is the input uh, is the yellow waveform and then the integration thereof is the blue waveform. I'm, yeah, I said that, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, we put in a sine wave and then we effectively we get out a cosine wave or a negative cosine. If you go back to your trig identities and, uh, and so on in calculus, when you, um, when you integrate a, um, a sine wave, you get a negative cosine. There's a scaling factor involved as well based on the frequency uh, and the sample rate here. All right. So... Uh, that all makes sense. Um, now, what happens now? That's our kind of like reference point. If we said, well, let's go to, uh, let's go to using frame. So I'll copy this down here and we'll do just as we did before. We'll just have the sample based version and the frame based version running at the same time. I'll go back and use that same small frame size of four. I won't tweak any of these blocks. And in fact, let me just see how this one was set up. This one was set up for sample based processing. And the Z to the minus one block is also set up for sample based processing. So we've got a, a, a setting on the delay block, which is sensitive to whether you're using frames or samples. And then the scope, as we saw before, has an input processing setting. So we've got everything set up to sample based right now, except now we've changed the input to be four samples for frame. Let's run it again and let's see what happens to the scope and just like we had before, we see something kind of odd. In fact, let's go ahead and take off the input now. We, we know that the input's a sine wave and we'll just get rid of that. So we're not, uh, we don't have too much clutter uh, on the screen. So let's just say input ports one, I'll put that back to where it was and we'll do the same thing down here. We'll just say input port one, run it again. And let's look at both of them. And we see something similar we saw before where we see this kind of four channel effect with the four colors. So we have four channels in parallel displayed. And we're not just integrating now a single signal. This lower implementation is actually in, actually integrating four um, parallel implementations and overlapping them of this particular uh, accumulator or digital discrete time integrator. So for instance, this bottom implementation is a little bit like duplicating this uh, four times, you know, if we just were to uh, do something like this and just keep duplicating it and duplicating it and then inputting not the same sample, but an offset by one. So the first sample goes here, the second sample goes here, the third sample goes here, the fourth sample goes here, the fifth goes here, the sixth goes here, the seventh grade, the eighth grade, and so on. And so that's effectively what this is implementing, okay? All, but it's all combined in a nice vector notation into just one, um, one accumulator here. So that's what we're showing on the screen in the lower right. Now it's probably not, in, in vector, there's a good chance it's not what the user intended when they built that system up. They just wanted a frame-based implementation. So in order to get that, we would actually have to specify uh, input processing frame-based on the delay block, as well as specifying the same thing on the scope block here and when we run it now well you don't quite see the same thing as above and that's because 
it's just taking the information that was provided. I didn't run the model again. It's just taking the information that was already there on the scope and, and serializing it. Okay. But that's not really what we want. The processing itself is also different. And in order to get different processing results, you have to run again. To get different visualization results, you don't have to run again. You can just change the setting on the scope. So let's run it again. And now we'll see that the two are indeed the same. So you, again, have to be very careful here. You can kind of, there's kind of four commutations of the settings here. Uh, you've got the, you could have uh, samples here and samples here. You could have frames here and samples here. You could have samples here and frames here. You could have frames here and frames here. So, you know, that that creates a lot of possibilities for the output or for the result. And that can therefore really confuse users if you're not sure um, of how to set these blocks up or even if these settings exist on the block. So the main thing here is be aware that there are these settings here on the delay and the same setting on the scope and you can access it using the gear icon. Okay, um, I think that's all um, I want to do in this recording. Maybe I'll mention one more thing and that'll be a lead in for the next uh, time around. And that is, I didn't point out this warning down here in the bottom part of the screen. Let's click on that. And that says, uh, this block diagram tests 1A contains one algebraic loop. To see more details, blah, blah, blah. Okay, found algebraic loop containing this delay block and this add block. Okay, so the downside of frames and systems with feedback, discrete time systems with feedback, is that it's very easy to um, end up with an algebraic loop in your model. Uh, that means essentially a loop in your model with zero, a feedback loop with zero delay, uh, which is also a physical impossibility. You can't practically implement such a system. Uh, so, you know, it's something you basically want to eliminate in your system. You don't want to just rely upon Simulink to quote unquote deal with it, which is what it's doing here. Um, so for again, for two reasons. One, it's a physical impossibility, so you wouldn't want to model something like that anyway. Second, it can uh, cause your simulation to run slower. You won't notice it on a very, very small model like this, but you will notice it when you get into larger, more complicated digital filters. So um, I'm just going to point out the problem in this video, and then the next video, we're going to go into more detail on this algebraic loop and how to work around it. All right, until then.